Today, all my watercolor dreams are coming true because I am finally getting around to making my own watercolor floral stickers. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Shada, and today we're gonna do something that I've been meaning to do for over a year now. We're going to make our own stickers. <laughs> um, so stickers are a really fun and simple thing to make. The only thing stopping me from doing it was that I simply had to order the sticker paper <laughs> from Amazon. But since I'm a little bit of a procrastinator, I just kept forgetting to do it. So here we are like a year later, the sticker paper is ordered. I have linked it in the video description as well so you can shop the same product. Um, and from there, this is a really fun and simple process. We're going to do some watercolor florals and then we'll take those florals into the computer, digitize them, and then you basically just print them back out on the sticker paper and you've got this lovely um, artwork that you can really use. So yeah, let's just jump right in. I'm gonna walk you through every step and patrons of the channel, be sure to head over to Patreon after today's video because you'll of course be able to print my stickers and then all you have to do is buy that sticker paper and print them out. Admittedly, that's a tricky step, but <laughs> um, definitely check that out after the video. Since these are watercolor stickers, I will start today with a little bit of painting, grab a paintbrush, and then we'll be using hot pressed 140 pound watercolor paper. Now the reason you want to use hot pressed is that it has almost no surface tooth or texture. Unlike cold pressed, which is textured or even rough, this is very smooth and that's important for when you're scanning your work into the computer later when we digitize it. Other than the hot pressed paper, you'll want some watercolor paints. I'm using a 48 pan set and I've linked that set in the description um, and I'm using a number number three pointed round brush. Now I'm starting by mixing up my color palette and I'm going to work today in a palette of pink, purple, and brown. And this works nicely together because I actually like to mix brown into my pinks and purples just to help them kind of be a little more muted, a little more sophisticated. It takes that uh, childish kind of brightness out of those shades. So a little bit of brown, pink, and purple. We're gonna come over here to our our, um, paper, our hot press paper, and I am going to paint some flowers and leaves. You guessed it, you knew, it's flowers and leaves. Um, so just playing around, having a bit of fun. This is a great way to practice your watercolors because you don't have to use all of the flowers and leaves that you paint. And as you practice, think about your brushwork. Think about dragging the belly of the brush across the page to make the shape of a leaf. Then you can use the pointed tip of that pointed round brush to do the smaller, more delicate bits like the stems and branches. So just think about those um, proper brushwork techniques and if you would like more um, information about painting flowers you're in the right spot this is the right channel uh, I will link some videos in a playlist below but I'm going along here painting more flowers and more leaves and one thing that you really want to keep in mind when you're painting your stickers is that you don't want to do anything too detailed now I've done some um, very delicate little flowers and leaves but there's no shapes here that are super tiny you want to set yourself up for success and part of that means painting on smooth hot pressed paper and also painting larger forms the smooth surface texture isn't the only reason I love using hot press paper for this. I also really like the way the paint settles. If you look at that burgundy leaf up there, the paint has settled so beautifully and that's going to look wonderful on a sticker. It's going to give that watercolor look. Okay, with my painting done, now I need to let it dry and then we'll scan it. I'm going to place mine in the scanner. If you don't have a scanner at home, head to a print shop or a Staples and have them do it for you. Now we're gonna come into Photoshop and we're going to start a new project. Go to Create New um, and you're going to create a canvas that's 8.5 by 11. Um, it should be at least a resolution of at least 300 pixels. And we will just click Create and that is going to start us off with a nice project that, that is the size of a piece of printer paper. With that done, come up here, go to File and Place Embedded 
and then we're going to find that scan if it's sitting on your desktop or whatever and bring that in I'll just place that in the corner all you have to do now is click enter to place it and there we go this is what we're going to work with so we'll come over here and you're going to right click and go to rasterize layer and that will make it possible for us to work with this and to digitize it then you're going to come over here to your left hand menu and you're going to get your magic wand tool right click on there there's three tools under one icon you want the magic wand then you're going to come up to the top here and you are looking at the tolerance setting a tolerance of 10 is a good place to start for your wand the tolerance is basically the magic wand sensitivity setting. So if the wand is selecting too much when you click on the page, make that tolerance a little lower. And if it is selecting not enough, make it a little higher. And then what you're going to do is click on this creamy paper area and you'll see the wand has actually done a pretty good job of figuring out where those edges are. If we zoom in, you can see it's not perfect, but it's okay. Um, and then it's also picked up some dust and stuff like that on the paper. So anywhere there's a weird spot, all you need to do is click on it. One trick that we have found is that when you do remove those dust spots, it often helps refine the edges where painting meets paper. Um, but if it's not, just zoom in and you can click near the edges of your watercolor painting and that should help refine the magic wand selection. Next, we're going to come over to the left hand menu again, and you are going to select the lasso tool. So grab that one. And what we'll do is use the lasso tool to pick up any remaining unwanted bits that are not part of the stickers. And then I'm coming up to the top here and I will click the icon that says add to selection. Add to selection. And then with my lasso, I will come over here and any of those little dust dots or paint splatters, you can just circle them with your lasso tool. We are telling Photoshop that that is part of the paper and not part of our painting. We do not want those little dots. We just want those big flowers and leaves. So. We are pretty much done with this step now. It looks good. So what we're going to do is take your cursor over to the bottom right and click this little icon here, add layer mask. So you're going to click that. And now you can see Photoshop knows what is paper and what is painting. So we're in a good spot. Come over here, click this one, and that should say layer mask thumbnail. So click on that. Then you're going to come up above here to this properties menu. So make sure you're in properties and you're going to click this one here, invert. And voila, now the paper is uh, gone and the layer we're looking at is the paintings. Okay, now that our clipping is done, we just want to refine it a little. So we're going to click select and mask here in the properties tab. Now you'll see this red background. The red is everything we have removed. Um, if you don't see it under properties, click view and go to overlay. And that should give you the same red background that I have. Now, if I zoom in on this leaf at the top here, it's pretty obvious that we have not removed the entire background. So what we wanna do is get rid of that. So come over to the left again, we're gonna select the brush tool from the menu and at the top, we are going to choose the minus sign and that will say restore original edge. So click on that. You're gonna bring your brush over here and you can see if I click, I'm able to begin to remove that. Now right click to open this menu. You can adjust the hardness of uh, or the feathering on the edge of your brush. I'm using a very hard uh, edged brush and I'm just going to quickly clean up in here. You can make your brush larger and smaller in order to carefully but quickly kind of get rid of that white area of paper. So there we go. That's looking good. Now, if you accidentally go over part of your painting, no problem, come up here and click the plus sign. It is labeled expand detection area. So we'll click on that. And then of course you just use your brush and you're going to go over um, 
over the, the watercolor portion. So that's looking good. There might be one or two more areas that I'm going to uh, use the brush and get rid of, uh, but some white areas like this leaf, I won't because there's just no point. It's fine. It doesn't need to be that uh, sort of finicky, especially portions that are inside a flower or leaf. It can look weird to have negative space um, where there wouldn't be any naturally. So if we zoom out, this is looking really good. It's easy to see on the red. And one thing that you might have noticed is that there's a little bit of a halo around the paintings and that's what we're going to deal with now. So come over to the right hand menu here and under global refinements, we are going to use that shift edge slider. I'll zoom in first um, and that little white halo, that's what we want to get rid of. Now, if you shift edge, if you go all the way down, it's just going to bring the edges of your painting in a few pixels. If I go up, you can see it expands it by a few pixels. I might almost be a little too close here, but if I zoom out, you can see that by shifting the edge, I've gone all the way 100% to the right. Uh, or to the left <laughs> that I now have um, these really tight edges and the watercolor paintings look good with no halo. We are quickly coming to the end of the digitizing process. You're going to right click on this and go to apply layer mask. And that kind of finishes up that whole portion where we are lifting those paintings. Now all we want to do is maybe use the lasso tool again and uh, you can select one, go to lasso, then switch to the move tool, which is the top one. Or if you're using the keyboard shortcuts, it is V. And so go let lasso, select it then V to move it. So you can kind of start moving these around. You can use Command T and select the entirety and then maybe make everything a little smaller because you, you don't want huge stickers or maybe you do, but for me, my journal isn't very big. So I want some tiny delicate stickers that are going to look good in my planner. So at this point, you know, you've done the hard work of digitizing your painting. Now all we're really doing is, um, you know, arranging the stickers on the page so that they uh, look nice when they're printed out. What I'm doing is kind of just moving everything onto one half of our eight by 11 canvas. And uh, then I'm going to click, right click on our layer and I'm just going to duplicate it. So I'll make a copy of that. Now make sure I'm selected on the copy layer and then I will drag it down so you just, all we did was right click on our layer, duplicate, make sure you're on the duplicated layer and then click command T and resize it. So now we've got some really tiny flowers and leaves. And uh, at this point, I wanna switch over. Here is the one that I actually made. What I did is I interspersed all sizes. So we've got all the medium sized ones and the really tiny ones on one page. Now what I wanna do is simply do some color adjustments. So this is an optional step. You want to make sure your adjustments window or panel is open. If you don't see it, go to window and find it uh, and it'll open. And then I'm going to use this first icon, the sun, and I will up the brightness and up the contrast a little bit. That's just going to make my watercolors pop off the page a little bit more. Um, one thing I find and the reason I do these color adjustments is that my scan is always a little bit yellowy or greeny. So a way to combat yellow or green is to add uh, magenta or red or even a bit of blue into or onto our canvas. So that's what I'm doing here, kind of playing with the color and the contrast. I'm going to um, kind of darken it a little bit. Again, this is optional. You don't have to do this, but if you would like uh, to just refine your image, this is an easy way to do it. And at this point, we're ready to print. So I'm going to click print. It uh, looks good. I'm just doing a test print on a piece of eight by 11 paper. The first one I thought was a little washed out. So again, I darkened it up the contrast a bit more. And now I am very happy with the look of this sticker sheet. So at this point, uh, let me grab my sticker paper. <laughs> so this is from Avery. I ordered it on Amazon. It's uh, glossy and clear. It also is uh, for use in laser or inkjet printers. So you wanna be sure the product you order is right for your printer. 
I'll take a sheet out here. You can see it's got a high gloss to it if I hold it the right way. And on the back, there is um, like a peely paper. So I'll feed that into my printer. And then uh, I did another print. And that's what it looks like printed on the um, high gloss sticker paper. I'm very pleased with this. You can see the watercolor texture has been captured. They really look like little watercolor leaves and flowers, which I love. And now the fun part, now you get to cut out all those stickers. <laughs> what a great time. So yeah, a little bit tedious, but um, it was all worth it, I would say, in the end. Here are my stickers. They um, were pretty easy to peel, I found, and you don't have to cut perfect edges because they are clear, of course. I used mine for a little spread in my bullet journal, and I honestly can't wait to make more and try some different color palettes, some larger stickers, and just play around with it. Patrons, remember you can grab my sticker pack on Patreon, so head over there after today's video. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.